In the previous lesson, we have covered the basics of single layer neural network and implemented a network using SGD method. In this lesson, we will use the concepts of previous lesson and we will train a single layer neural network using batch method. If you are not familiar with the theoretical concept, I recommend you to take previous lesson first. If you do not have idea about the theoretical concept, you will not understand this lesson properly. To train a single layer neural network using batch method, we will prepare a MATLAB script that will train the network. The name of the script is training batch. The training batch script will call a function named function batch. This function will return the updated weights. The function batch requires sigmoid function. We will implement the sigmoid function as well. Finally, we will write a script named testing batch to test the trained network using weights returned by function batch. I hope you have understood what we are going to do in this lesson. This is our single layer neural network. These are the training data and these are the correct outputs. We are going to find the weights so that for these inputs, this network generates these outputs. And we are going to do it using batch method. Let's get started. Launch the MATLAB. Then click on the new script. Now click on save. Create a new folder on your desktop. Name it batch method. Inside this folder, save the script as training batch. Now declare a variable named input and assign the training data matrix to this variable. These are our training data. Now we need the correct outputs. I hope you remember that in supervised learning, the training data come in training data correct output pair. These are the corresponding correct outputs. At the beginning, we need to add some random variable to the network. For that, I'm creating a variable named weight. And then, using MATLAB's RAND function to generate random weights. Let's see what this line is doing here. If we call RAND function, it gives us a random number in between 0 and 1. When we pass 1, 2 as argument of the RAND function, it gives us two random numbers. When we use 1, 3 as the argument, it generates three random numbers in single row. However, it will always give positive number. When we subtract 1 from here, we get negative number. In this case, these numbers will always remain negative. We need both positive and negative random numbers. If we multiply 2 with the random function here, then we get both positive and negative random numbers. So this is what is happening in this line. It is generating some random weights. Let's add some space here so that you can read the code easily. Now we will take a for loop. This loop will iterate for 40,000 times. 
and every time it calls the function bat it returns the weight this function requires this weight this input and this correct output as argument we are iterating this for loop for 40000 times that means the weights will be adjusted for 40000 times and the final weights are these weights i hope you have understood what is happening in this script let's prepare the function batch now click on the plus symbol then click on save save it as function batch to declare a function in matlab we start with the keyword function then we define the returning variable this function will return weight after that we take an equal symbol and write the name of the function here the name is function batch then we define the input arguments we already know that the input arguments are weight input and correct output the function has been defined at the beginning i'm setting the learning rate alpha equals 0.9 now i'm creating an empty single column matrix let's see what this line of code actually generates it is generating this empty single column matrix of zeros later we will keep our updated weights in this matrix now set n equals 4 now initiate a for loop it will iterate for n times now take a variable named transposed input then write input opening brackets k comma colon closing brackets and single quote terminate this line with a semicolon this line transposes the rows of the input matrix let's see how it is working this is the input matrix here input means this matrix this comma colon means the first row and this single quote is used to transpose the row here is the transposed row if we use two instead of one the second row will be transposed to transpose the third row we have to write three the fourth row will be transposed if we set four here in the for loop the value of k increases by one in every iteration you can see k increases from one to four and this is how this code is transposing every row of input data now the question is why do we need to transpose the rows the answer to this question is coming on the next line here we are calculating the weighted sum which is multiplication of weight and transposed input the weight here is a single row matrix with three columns and transposed input is a single column matrix with three rows for matrix multiplication number of rows must be equal to the number of columns and this is why we have to transpose the input if we would not have transposed it then the multiplication would be like this which is mathematically incorrect after transposing the input we have got this form of multiplication which is correct matrix multiplication expression i think you have understood why we transpose the input after calculating the weighted sum we process the value using sigmoid function this processed value is our predicted output now getting the correct output from the correct output matrix 
and the difference between correct output and the output is the error. Now calculating the delta using this error value Once we have the value of delta, we can modify the weights by multiplying alpha, delta, and transposed input. Now saving this modified weight in initial weights matrix. This is the end of for loop. In the batch method, we do not change the weight right away. First, we calculate the average modified weight. Then we update the weights of the network using the average value. Now calculating the average weight. We have three weights in the network. Updating the first weight by adding the average weight to it. Now updating the second weight. and updating the last weight. This is the end of this function. I hope you have understood how this function is going to train the network. This function requires sigmoid function to process output. We are going to create the sigmoid function now. For that, click on plus symbol, then click on save. Save it as sigmoid. We are going to define the function now. It starts with the function keyword, then the return variable. It returns y. And the name of the function is sigmoid. It requires x as input argument. There is nothing complex about sigmoid function. It is simply the implementation of this function. Here y equals 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus x and that's the end of sigmoid function. Now we will implement the testing batch script to test the network. For that click on plus symbol then click on save and save the script as training batch. At first Create a matrix of testing data, then set n equals 4. After that, initiate a for loop. It will iterate for n times. Then we have to transpose the rows of testing data. The output will be weight multiplied with the transposed of testing data. This weight is the weight we will get after training the network. Finally, we have to process the output using sigmoid function. That's the end of the for loop and also the end of this script. Now, now it's time to train the network. For that, go to the training batch tab, then click on run. Once the training is completed, we will get the trained weight here. Now go to the testing batch tab and click on run. Here is the result. First and second output are close to zero. And the third and fourth output are close to one. Let's analyze the result. This table shows the input and correct output pair. Our network for this input has generated this output, which is almost equal to the expected result. That means our network has been trained properly. So far we have covered the theoretical concept of single layer neural network and we have implemented them using both SGD and batch method. In the next lesson, we will apply this SGD and BAT method in real-world application. It is going to be a very interesting lesson and I'll see you there.